everyone, it's Miss Victoria, and today I'm going to explain to you bacteria and viruses and what is the difference. Bacteria are tiny, single-celled microorganisms that exist almost everywhere. Bacteria live in every climate and location on the earth, and you can find them in the air, in the soil, and even within you and me. And they can quickly grow without a host under favorable conditions via binary fusion. Bacteria also has free-floating DNA. It has a cell wall, protoplasma, and plasmids, which make them more resistant. And I'm gonna tell you, every time I hear bacteria and other people hear bacteria, they get freaked out. They think that it is a bad thing. But these types of microorganisms have many functions in our environment, and we probably couldn't survive without them. Understand this, that the majority of bacteria are harmless. Some of these are beneficial to human beings, such as some of the strains that you find in yogurt and kefir, like Lactobacillus acidophilus, Lactobacillus plantarium, Bifidobacterium longium, and Bifidobacterium bifido. These help you with gut health, right? So that means that these bacteria can help restore your digestive system, it can help boost your immunity, and can make the body an unwelcoming environment for toxic pathogens. There is only a small number of bacterial strains that are harmful to humans, and some of them can make you really sick, so I am not saying that all bacteria are good. Bacteria also have these fun and funky shapes that they differ in size. So when you look at them under a microscope, you're going to find three types of shapes, right? So the first one is bacilli. Bacilli is a rod-shaped bacteria. It sort of looks like the orso pasta that they use in salads. And cochi, they look like spears, sort of like little microscopic marbles. And spirilla, they look like that spiral pasta that you use for macaroni and cheese. Now you may be wondering why am I using these um, comparisons and the reason is is because I want them to embed into your memory. Now there's two classifications for bacteria, a gram-positive bacterium and a gram-negative. Gram-positive bacterium have a thick cell wall that stains purple and they use this crystal violet thing to under, um, oh my god I forgot how you call that. Anyway, they use them in the lab so that they can tell you what type of bacteria it is. And then the gram negative, they tend to stain pink. Now, these things help you classify a proper course of treatment for the bacterium and question if a treatment is necessary. Now, viruses are a little bit more sophisticated and they are frequently much smaller than bacteria. They act as a microscopic parasite, but they need a host in order to replicate, unlike bacteria. Viruses tend to be contagious from human to human, and even animals to human, and human to animals. Viruses are unparalleled among microorganisms. They differ very much from a bacteria. They only contain a nucleic acid and proteins, and some microbiologists may argue that they are not viable living organisms. See, viruses do have an outer lipid bilayer membrane that surrounds the capsid that may contain glycoproteins or enzymes. And viruses tend to be either DNA or RNA and may have a single-stranded or a double-stranded nucleic acid. The issue with viruses is that viruses can invade your body and hijack the cells to grow and replicate their genetic material. Remember that RNA and DNA? Making millions of copies of the original virus. And unlike bacterial infection groups, the classifications of viruses differ. The type of nucleic acid, the capsid symmetry, the assembly, the size and the quantities of the capsomer. And also, they must have an envelope. And the, we need to analyze all these things to determine what type of virus that it is. Viruses and bacteria 
can be overwhelming to understand. And maybe this video has helped you. And I hope that it clears some of it up for you. If you have any questions or you would like to comment, please go ahead below and let me know if you need to know more. Talk to you soon.